Hey, welcome back. We're on section 3.4, and one of the coolest graphs you can make is a sine graph or a cosine graph, and that's what we're going to graph today. I went to the old YouTube, and I found that uh, Suzanne Harper and June Patton have made this fantastic animation that demonstrates how the sine curve is actually created as we're graphing the vertical displacement. That's the sine, right? Take a look right here. We have the unit circle. Keep your eye on the vertical displacement of point P that we were talking about in earlier lessons. It goes from zero all the way up to one. If you notice, that's what the sine curve does. And then it comes back down to zero. And it's gonna proceed down to negative one. And then it comes back and it ends at zero. And that's in one full revolution around the circle. This is a fantastic demonstration. So I thank you, ladies. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna graph. We're actually gonna graph by hand the sine and cosine functions. That's section 3.4. And actually, we are gonna graph sine, but you all are gonna graph cosine by yourself. So you better pay attention here and kind of figure out what we're doing. If you remember the vertical displacement of point P when it's on this unit circle here, it's, it's the Y, it's the y coordinate, right? It's how high the point is above the x-axis. That is what this sine of theta gives you. And remember, this is only true for a unit circle because the radius is one and we do opposite over the hypotenuse, hypotenuse is one. We went through that in an earlier lesson. Also keep in mind when you do cosine, that is the horizontal displacement or the x value, right? But I want you right now to focus only on that y value and I'm gonna draw an initial ray and, and a terminal ray in standard position here. Our first angle that we're gonna look at is pi over six, which is 30 degrees, right? And we're looking at the y value, so it's one half. All right, so get a visual right now. We go up to a half and then we go up to radical 2 over 2, which is about 0.7. Then we get radical 3 over 2. Well, that's a little bit more. It's about 0.86. And then finally, when we have a 90 degree angle or a pi over 2, we have the y value is up at 1. Remember, that's the radius of the circle. And then what happens? It starts going down. As that angle theta starts getting bigger and bigger, the y value is going down, going down. Eventually, it's back down at 0. And then what happens? It starts going negative, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to actually write down all the y values. We're gonna go from zero all the way around to two pi. We have a beautiful table right here uh, and we have you set up so the decimals are already converted. That's just to save some time, but go ahead and fill in these tables for each theta. For example, the first one here uh, at zero, the y value, the sine of theta would be zero. But as we went to pi over six, we got a half, right? I mean, that was the y coordinate. Let me put this back at pi over six was right here like this. The y coordinate was one half. So we write that down and then we do pi over four all the way through to two pi. So pause the video and fill out that table. All right, so hopefully your table looks spiffy. I'm gonna say spiffy, look at mine. Mine's pretty spiffy. Uh, we start at zero, we go up to one, back down to zero and then it goes negative down to negative one and it comes back up to zero. All right, well, this is the sine function. Let's graph this thing. Go to your, uh, what do we do right here? Go to your graph. So next we're gonna do some good old fashioned XY plotting some points. The first point we're gonna plot at uh, pi over six, that's 30 degrees, right? So pi over six, I know that the sine was 0.5, right? Cause it was one half. And then at pi over four, it was about 0.7, somewhere in that range. Pi over three, you should get 0.866. That's radical three over two. And then we finish off the first quadrant up here at pi over two, you should be all the way up at one. And check that out, we're getting a nice little curve here. What I want you to do is pause the video and complete this curve, plot all those points from your table that you filled in earlier, go. Now hopefully your graph is as cool as mine, but I get this value right here, nice little shape. And remember we're plotting the what it's the y coordinate right of that unit circle and it started at zero and it went all the way up at pi over two is at one it came back to zero went to negative one and came back up and that is one cycle of this periodic function remember a function like this is called periodic because it repeats itself if that angle went around and around and around then this pattern would repeat itself back and forth remember the period of the function is how long it takes to complete the cycle so what's the period of this function you know that, it's two pi, right? It takes two pi radians to complete one full cycle. So the period here would be two pi. Okay, so that was pretty simple. We, we made the table and then we plotted the points. And so the next part of our notes, we're gonna talk about the concavity and whether it is increasing or decreasing. Here's that unit circle again. Not that one, that one, here we go. So 
we're going to go around, right? This is what's happening. We're going around the circle, unit circle, theta is increasing, and we're plotting the y. Look, y is 0, and then y goes up, and y is 1. And over here, the corresponding part of that graph, easy, right? It's from here, 0 to pi over 2, and then it stops at 1, and it starts going down again. Specifically, this part up here wants to talk about where is the sine value increasing. And I think it's always easier to look at our xy coordinate plane right here. I know that it's increasing from here to here, right? That's what increasing means. You're going up and the y values are increasing. And it's also increasing from 3 pi over 2 up to 2 pi. So on a graph, what does that look like? I mean, from 0 to 2 pi, that's where it's increasing. And then 3 pi over 2 all the way back to 0. This part of the graph is where the sign is actually increasing. Now, where is the sign decreasing? Well, sign is decreasing from pi over 2 all the way down to 3 pi over 2. If you notice, every value to the right is less than the value to its left. And so that's one of the definitions of decreasing. It just keeps going down. So if we were going to label that on the unit circle, that is from pi over 2. That's up here all the way down. Oh, that was terrible. Mr. Kelly, what is wrong with your coordination today? It's like every other day. Okay, so let's actually put this into words. The sine of theta increases from 0 to pi over 2. That's that first chunk. And then 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi while it decreases from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Now, we can talk about concavity, right? So concavity is where it looks like, my, I think the rule I gave you a long time ago, if it's upside down like a frown, then it's concave down. And if it's shaped like a cup, it's concave up. And so looking at uh, what we have for the sine function, the very first part here, this looks very frowny. Oh man, look at that, that's not very happy. Uh, so that would be concave down, the red part. And then concave up would be this part right here. So if Oh, Mr. Kelly, what is going on? If we were going to identify this on the unit circle, what would that look like? We said concave down from 0 to pi. So here's the concave down graph. So I would just say it's this part of the unit circle, and then it's concave up from pi all the way to pi over 2. Easy enough, right, people? Can we put words with that? Yeah, we could put words with that. We would say that the sine of theta is concave down from zero to pi, but concave up from pi to two pi. So now we can actually answer some questions that are a little more specific, but if you think of it in terms of the function on the graph, I don't think it's too difficult. It says describe the concavity of f on the interval, and f is increasing or is it decreasing? We can talk about both of those. So from pi over two to pi, that's from the top of the hill down here to zero. What is it? Well, I know that the function is decreasing but it's concave down. So we could write something to that effect. The sine of theta is concave down and it's decreasing. Now, what about from three pi over two to two pi? That's this last tail, right? So the last tail, it's definitely, incre the function's increasing because it's going up and it's also concave up. Fantastic. Now, what about this last one? I would say that when we're looking from pi over two all the way to three pi over two, the concavity changes, right? But it's decreasing the entire way. So it's first concave down, and then it's concave up, and it is continuously decreasing. Well, that's easy enough. So that finishes uh, our analysis of the sine function. You're going to have to do cosine all by yourself right now. So here's what you're going to do. Pause the video, complete the table, complete the graph, complete these questions about increasing, decreasing, and concavity, and I'll come back here, and I'll give you the answers, and we can check it as we continue the lesson. So pause the video and go. Your turn now. All right, let's check our answers. Here's what I get for the cosine function, right? Starts at one because we're, we're measuring the horizontal displacement from the y-axis, okay? So, and then it goes to zero because eventually the horizontal displacement is zero when the unit circle is at the top. Uh, here's what our graph looks like when we graph it. All right, so we checked our, we checked our answers there. We're checking our graph. So here we go, all the way down to negative one here by pi and comes back up. That is fantastic. And now let's talk about all of these wonderful uh, increasing and decreasing. Here's our cosine curve. Where is it increasing? Well, increasing is from pi to 2 pi, and it's decreasing from 0 to pi. 
okay I tried to color coordinate that for you and then where is it concave up remember concave up is where it looks like a cup so that's from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 we're gonna write that out by saying it is concave up from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 but concave down oh, I never did the rest of that circle concave down is this first quadrant right here right as we go from 0 to pi over 2 and it's also concave down uh, th from 3 pi over 2 all the way to 2 pi and that's it we did all of our concavity increasing decreasing we talk about increase or decrease yeah we did up here so now we're gonna do this part the function is given by the cosine of theta describe the concavity and whether it's increasing or decreasing so you were supposed to do these as well and the way that I like to do it is uh, I color coordinated each one of these from pi over 2 to pi obviously uh, what's going on here that's the red part right so it is concave up but it's decreasing whereas from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi it is increasing and it's concave down and lastly that middle piece from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 it's concave up the whole way but at first it decreases and then turns around and increases and that is our cosine function hopefully you had no problem analyzing that hey man we might ask you to do this for another function in the future so hopefully that went pretty well last part number seven this is a great college board like question here test prep we're given an angle theta and you notice that theta here goes all the way into the third quadrant okay the function g is uh, given by g of a equals a sine of a so we're dealing with a sine function and for the angle alpha which is not shown remember alpha is just another variable like theta and in this case it's representing this angle that is somewhere between it goes a little bit further than theta but not so far as 3 pi over 2 that's what this says right here alpha is somewhere between theta and 3 pi over 2 which means that that uh, terminal angle here ray that terminal ray is between uh, this ray and this ray down here so it's in here somewhere all right which of the following is true you need to figure out whether the function value is less than for for alpha is less than theta whether it's greater than theta equal to theta or maybe you just can't tell so what I like to do here I'm gonna draw a picture of the sine function right here because that's what we're dealing with so here is our little uh, tiny sine function here but I'm really gonna to focus in on where theta is look theta is past pi so pi's here and theta is somewhere in the middle we don't know exactly where and 3 pi over 2 is right here so I'm looking at this part of the graph in here not sure if I was clear with that so after like theta is somewhere between pi and 3 pi over 2 and then somewhere between theta and 3 pi over 2 is alpha alpha is in here somewhere but that's just all scrunched together so maybe I'll zoom in on it give a little zoom here so the bottom part of that sine curve theta is somewhere and alpha is in between it and now we can answer our question they want to know whether the function value or the y value for alpha is it less than or greater than theta that's basically the that's the question we know that the function is decreasing therefore every theta value that's to the right in this interval is going to be less than the value on the left which is why g of alpha is less than g of theta now you could ask this question a lot of different ways uh, they could go all the way to 2 pi and then maybe sometimes it's decreasing sometimes it's increasing that would be choice d but we didn't go all the way to 2 pi we only went to 3 pi over 2 um, there'd be if you went to 2 pi there'd be a point where it could be equal to as well right there's some value over here for theta that there's another value such that they're equal that's but that's going to 2 pi again that's they'd have to change the question that way and then of course if the entire interval was in the fourth quadrant then b could be true but that's why all three of those are not true but they're possible questions that you have to watch out for i think that's everything for this lesson I wish you all well on your sine journey through this and your cosine. Hopefully you got that all right. This is Mr. Kelly. Remember, it's always nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. See ya!